Hi guys, uh, in this video I am going to go through with you the uh, CIE IGCSE uh, exam, just to give you a little idea of uh, how it should have gone um, from last year. Now, first thing to notice, uh, this first exam uh, involves using components called capacitors. Now, you won't have come across capacitors before, so it's a little bit uh, trickier when we come across something like this, um, and it's totally fine if you're a little bit thrown by that. You may, in the real thing, be given components that you haven't come across before. doesn't matter. You treat them exactly the same way, just do what the exam says. Um, so, the first thing you're asked to do is to set up the circuit. So, if you just change the view, um, here you can see uh, my setup here. So I have my power supply over here and the rest of my components around. So these are these strange things that you're told to work with. Uh, I put in the wrong one, so I'm going to change this to a set of three of these clusters. You'll notice that they have these plus signs on them, um, and if you check in the mark scheme, uh, sorry not the mark scheme, if you check in the paper there, you can see that the plus again appears there. So it is important to make sure that the clusters are the right way around. Um, in reality, actually, for, for this one, a capacitor doesn't really care which way around it goes. Um, but uh, sometimes they might give you something in a box, say. Um, and if it's something in a box where you can't see what the component is, it could be a diode, and then the direction really, really does matter. So always pay attention to that direction. Uh, and then I've got this component here labeled C, um, and you can see that it has terminals labeled A and B, uh, and is labeled C like that. So I need to make it quite careful um, that I've got that the right way up. Two. Uh, so I've, I've laid everything out in front of me in the same way that it's shown in the diagram, so now I just need to build it. Uh, I'm going to start off with movable lead L, which goes into one of my capacitors, and then it's just uh, loose, and then connect things up. So I can see that A goes into the plus on my power supply. Now, when you uh, are connecting things to the power supply, we will set these dials for you. You do not need to adjust them in any way, so don't touch the dials, um, you're just going to cause a world of hurt for yourself. Uh, so that goes into there. Also from B, it goes into the other side of my voltmeter. Now I'm getting a little, I got a little bit confused actually when I was rehearsing for this. So what I'm going to do just for now is turn my voltmeter that way around, um, and that way I can see the top and bottom connections on here, um, and it should just help me to, to keep things clear in my head. So it goes from B into the bottom of my voltmeter. And then from there, in parallel, it goes into my set of three, then into my set of two, then it goes back the opposite way across the top. Now it goes into the top of my voltmeter. And you see how just by turning my voltmeter uh, to be the same way as it is in the diagram, I've just saved myself a lot of trouble. Okay, now I've got movable lead L here as well that I can flap around. And it says I need five components in parallel. So here are one, two, three, four, five, and I can see if they can solve it together. In parallel. So I believe that I am good to go, except uh, I need a switch S as well. So let me just add in. Switch S goes after the plus, and just so you can make it nice and clear for you, I'll just put the switch S in as well. Sometimes you'll get given a switch S, um, and it won't actually be a real switch, it will just be the fact that you're asked to switch the power supply on or off, or disconnect and reconnect uh, a lead. Whichever one you do, it's okay. Uh, just make sure that you understand um, what you should be doing. If you're not sure, you can ask your supervisor. You won't lose marks for asking about something. You'll only uh, potentially lose marks if we have to actually uh, give you help. But if you're just saying, you know, am I supposed to do this lead by unplugging it rather than using a switch, um, you shouldn't lose any marks for that. Okay? So, check that the positive terminals and power supplies component C and the groups of components are connected to the show. So again, it's quite important that this one seems to be um, really stressing to us that they want us to connect things around the correct way. Like I said, I happen to know that it doesn't actually matter, but you don't necessarily know that. Then it says, connect movable lead L to terminal A, close switch S, and record the voltage VS shown on the voltmeter. So this is not the easiest thing to do. It might be a good idea to have uh, the instructions ready, uh, just at one side. So it says, connect movable lead L, that's that one, to terminal A. Check it on here. That's it connected. Uh, let's make sure my power supply is on as well. Uh, that's better. And then it says uh, close switch S. So that is now closed. And record the voltage VS showing the voltmeter. Now my voltmeter is currently reading zero. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, uh, but it's a zero. So that's potentially a big problem, but that's okay. All I need to do is just move it over to read DC, and that has solved precisely nothing interesting. 
what's happening. So presumably I've made a, an error somewhere in my circuit. Ah, there we go. Um, so what happened there was, um, if you remember these school power supplies, they have a zero off and a one position on the fine adjustment, um, but the, the switch wasn't actually lining up with the zero. Um, I'm not going to move the camera because it might cause problems. So um, just check your power supply settings if you're not sure. That's a point where asking a supervisor would be totally fine because you're going, I'm still getting zero, this doesn't seem right. No problem at all asking a supervisor for help there. Um, okay, so my voltmeter is reading 5.89. So in my test, I'm just going to write directly in the script that number, 5.89. And it's always important to include the unit. And just remember that whenever you do this, you need the same number of significant figures as your device. So this is recording to 3 sig fig. You should record to 3 sig fig. If I later do any calculations on that, that should be to the same number. Okay, I am then told to open switch S. So I open means open circuit or switch it off. So I've done that. Okay, it then says record the total number N of components in the parallel component holders. Well, uh, I'm just going to do this on the screen because it's just easier to see it that way. Um, you can see I've got one, two, three, four, five components all in parallel there. So I'm just going to write in that. It's five. And then it says, this is where a lot of people struggled, and I'm going to be totally honest with you, I got this, I, I totally made a hash of this in the real thing last year when I was doing my supervisor results. It's, it's not, well it is easy actually, there's no excuse, you just have to do what you're told. So, move the movable lead L and connect it to terminal B. Terminal B is labelled, so just do, plug it in, check it. Then it says close switch S, so that means turn it on. Open switch S after approximately five seconds. Now, actually, if a capacitor passes, this type of circuit will charge almost instantaneously. You'll learn all about this in year 13. But it doesn't matter. Follow the instructions anyway. Count to about five in your head. Then turn it off. And then it says move the, move the movable lead L and connect it to terminal A. Immediately record the voltage V shown by the voltmeter. So here's A. I'm going to plug it in here and immediately look on here. 5.34. That is 5.34 volts. So I'm going to make sure that I record that carefully in here. 5.34 volts. And again, please don't throw away marks um, by putting in the wrong numbers of different figures. Okay, so now again, classic thing, I'm going to be asked to change N and repeat B until you have six sets of values for N and V. One of the component holders may be left empty if required. Record your results in a table, include your values from B, also include the values of 1 over V in your table. So, pretty easy table to have. So I want my number of uh, components N, and I want to record V. Really important to record this with a unit, so V will be in volts. Uh, and I'm asked for 1 divided by the volts here, um, and the unit for that will be volts to the power of negative 1. So you're going to do this with a, a ruler in the real thing, but... Rulers don't work particularly well on graphics tablets, uh, so I'm just going to do it this way. Um, and I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, and just for fun, because I've got enough to do it, I'm going to do seven. Um, so let's, might as well, start, start, start right at the beginning, and I'm going to go with just one component by itself. So n is one. So to do it with n is one, I'm going to put in one lonely little component by itself, um, and then I'm told to repeat B. So let's just remind ourselves of point B. We move the switch L and connect it to B. So there's L, plugged it into B. Uh, we then need to close switch S and open it after five seconds. So close it, that means switch it on. One, two, three, four, five. Turn it off and then move it back to A and immediately record. That's 5.77. So in my table, I'm going to just write down 5.77. Really important here to record the same number of significant figures as in your readings, uh, sorry, as in your instruments. Uh, I also need to compute 1 over V, so hopefully you're not going to find that too difficult. 1 divided by 5.77, that comes to... 0.173, and you'll notice I've given it to the same number of significant figures as my reading. Always record the same number of sig figures.
actual reading. Okay, um, I'm just going to go ahead um, and I'll do one more just to show you um, the idea. So now I want two together. Um, again, I'm just leaving this one empty because um, I can, and I've got two in parallel here. So let's connect that one in there. And then I'm going to repeat the same procedure. So plug it into B, close the switch, two, three, four, five, open it again, connect it to A, and that's 5.66. So in here goes the value 5.66 and one divided by, no, one divided by 5.66 comes to what? No, zero point one seven seven. Again, be consistent with your number of decimal places. Okay, cue the crazy montage, and I'm going to just fill up the rest of these. Um, and I'm now asked to plot a graph of 1 over v on the y-axis against n on the x-axis and then draw a straight line of best fit. Okay, now I'm not sure how well this is going to work, but I'm going to try and show you how to do a graph. Um, usually I'd start right at the edge of the axes over here, um, but because I've, I've already checked this one, I know that it's not going to fit perfectly anyway, I'm going to start a little bit further in. Other thing to note, um, I'm doing this in a thick pen so you can see what I'm doing. Do not use a thick pen when you come to do this. That will make me very cross. Okay, so I'm going to put my n-axis along here. So that's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I might as well go up to 8. Do not forget to label your axes. Then going up along this axis. Okay, going on this axis. Um, and now I'd like to go up um, in 1, in 0 0.001s, um, but it won't quite fit. I'm going to go up in 0.002s, which is annoying, but never mind. Uh, so this will be 0 0.172. And do not forget to label your axes. Always label your axes. Okay, now I just need to plot my results and see how they look. Okay, so there are, there's my line of best fit, so there's my results. Now it's time to do my line of best fit. So I have a transparent ruler, and the key to doing a line of best fit is to get your, your ruler pointing in roughly the right direction of all the results. And I'd say it's about there. And then just move it up and down so that you have the same number of points above as you do below. And when you do that, you then just do a nice, bold line of best fit through it like that. Uh, I now need to put in my, I'm just going to make my line of best fit even bigger, uh, even thicker, just so again there's no doubt about it. There we go. Uh, and I need to do my uh, triangle for my uh, gradient. So I'm going to start off in this corner, uh, and I'm just going to look over here for where it goes through two points. Uh, and I can see it goes through two points relatively nicely about here. Uh, so that's going to be the start of my triangle. And then looking from this end, again, I'm just going to go up until I find somewhere where it goes through two points. Now, like I say, I'm using far too thick a pen for this. Please don't use anything like this in the real thing. Um, I'm only doing this so that you can see the shape of what I am doing. Okay, there's my other one. Um, and I always like to make it really, really dead obvious for the examiner, the actual coordinates that I'm using. So this one which is uh, 0 0.5, uh, and that is 1, sorry, 0 0.17, uh, 3.246, 1736. Uh, and this one over here 
would be uh, 8.2 uh, and 0 0.196. Uh, you'll notice that those coordinates aren't actually, uh, sorry, this, this coordinate over here is actually beyond my line of best fit. That's totally fine, nothing wrong with doing that at all. Okay, so now I'm asked to determine the gradient and the y intercept. So I have already uh, worked out a couple of points, I just need to use them. Um, so remember that your gradient, which I'm going to call m, is equal to your change in your y-axis divided by your change in your x-axis. Uh, so in my case, my change in my y-axis uh, was it went from 0 0.196, uh, take away 0 0.1736, and I'm going to divide that by my change in x, which will be 8.2, take away 0 0.5, 5. Again, I'm doing a lot of uh, do as I say, not as I do here. Um, when you're writing with a pencil, uh, this obviously will be a lot neater than I am doing it. So that is 0 0.023. That makes 16.4. So my gradient will be That is uh, 1.4 times 10 to the negative 3. Um, and that's just a straight gradient, um, so I don't need to put units here. Um, but I'm going to anyway, um, so that's a per volt divided by a number, so that would be per volt. And my y-axis is I'm just going to read off from my intercept, um, and my intercept will be 0 0.176. Uh, okay, so now we just asked uh, the classic question that they will always do here. It's just that the quantities V and N are related by this equation. So you'll notice that 1 over V is what you plotted on your x-axis. N, sorry, is on your y-axis. N is what you plotted on your x-axis. So that means that this number A must be your gradient. Uh, and this number B must be your y-intercept. Um, so you're asked A and B are constants, give your answer to D3, determine the value of A and B, and notice here it does say give appropriate units. Um, so uh, we are asked for uh, the gradient, we already worked out earlier that the gradient is 1.4 times 10 to the power of negative 3. Now when it comes to the units, if you remember I did say that I believe that the units are going to be uh, volts to the power of negative 1, because we've done dy, change in y, which is in per volts, divided by a number, which is dimensionless, just n is, just has no dimensions. Uh, and then b is my y-intercept, um, which is 0 0.176, again, per volts. Now, what we can do here <laughs> is a nice little trick just to check that we've done this properly. Um, if you look at uh, here, we have 1 divided by a v, so I know that the units of 1 divided by v are v to the power of negative 1. And then over here, I have a number, which is my gradient, multiplied by a number of components. Now, I've said that this is v to the power of negative 1. v to the power of negative 1 multiplied by a number will give me v to the negative 1 plus a b. And that's in the same thing. So this is called dimensional analysis, and it's a nice little trick that you can use just to check that your gradients make sense and are consistent. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.